Hello and welcome to Real English with Real Teachers. Today I will be giving you my five best free online language learning resources of 2019. And if you stay till the end, I will give you a bonus resource. How about that? This video has been sponsored by PDF Element by Wondershare, but I will tell you about them later. You're watching Real English with Real Teachers. Real Teachers. Real teachers. So number one is called Younglish. It's a website for sentence examples. If you've ever had a word that you want to learn and you want to know how to collocate it into the right structure of the sentence, how you want to use prepositions around it, how to pronounce it even, but also maybe even see the difference between the British, American and Australian versions of how to use it then this is a great website. So it takes a huge amount of YouTube data and responds to any keyword that you put in. So if you're learning a word like fussy, this means to be picky, to be difficult, to be pleased. I am a fussy eater. I don't like most things, I am fussy. If you're learning a word like this, you type it in to Younglish and then it will provide you with British, American or Australian as an option and you or you could do all if you want and then you will be given probably about 50 to 100 sentence examples with that keyword being shown. Depends on the word. If it's really really specific it might struggle but if it is a general word it is really really powerful. So you get to see the subtitles really clearly and you get to skip back to the beginning of the entry or you can even skip to the next one if you don't like the example that they're providing you. So not only does it give you subtitles, it's obviously a video. So you get to see the person using it. You can then go on to look at the whole video of that if you wish. But it's a really good way of giving you examples because it's real English. It's being used in the current day and uh, you can even rewind if you didn't catch it the first time. So, Younglish is my go-to sentence example website for 2019. Going on to number two, this one has been around for a good few years. I started using it at the beginning of my uh, language teaching uh, career about five years ago and it's still providing really valuable content. You've probably heard of it, but I'm going to give you some extra tips on how to use it really well for language learning. Uh, this is TED.com. TED, if you haven't heard of it, is a website full of presentations or talks from people who are leaders of their industry, normally. It can be uh, more junior positions, but it is certainly people who are inspiring ideas about their niche, about their area of work. Now, this is fantastic for general education, but it's also really good for language learners. And because you are learning English, I'd say you have a small advantage over people who are learning other languages. There is so much content out there that is spoken or written in English. And that means that you can connect with an idea that inspires you, that, that inflames motivation and passion whilst learning English. So if you like to learn about meteors in space, if you like to learn about the nature in Africa, if you like to learn about politics in New Zealand, then there's probably that for you on TED.com. So let's go into the features of the website. Firstly, you get to slow the speech down. If it is too fast for you, you can slow it down and enjoy a more comfortable speed. Secondly, you've got subtitles. Now, most websites have subtitles as an option, but because it, it is quite a selective website, they don't just allow anyone to upload, it is uh, controlled and they spend a lot of time on making sure that the not only the subtitles, but the transcripts are accurate. So it's, it's very powerful for a language learner because if you don't know a word, you'll always be able to see what the word is in the subtitles or the transcripts. And moving on to those transcripts, 
there is an option to go directly to the whole transcript to read on your own if you just want to do some reading practice or you could simply read along as it highlights the line as, as it goes through the speech. But I use it in lessons a lot of the time to uh, read with a student and paraphrase and to create conversation throughout the transcript. So transcripts, subtitles, and the fact that there is a huge amount of topics there makes TED.com my second choice for online language learning resources. All right. On to number three. My third online language learning resource that is free, it does have a premium version, but it definitely has a free version that is very, very capable, is Grammarly. Now, I use Grammarly, even though I'm a teacher, I'm a native. Uh, Grammarly is your writing assistant, your digital writing assistant, and it helps improve your grammar within your writing. It, it does spell checking and uh, it also introduces really smart suggestions for why you made a mistake. So it started as a web editor, but now it's pretty much available on all digital devices in, in all areas as well. You could integrate it into your emails, Facebook Messenger, even your social media posts, and obviously on your Word documents and anything online. So it's covered pretty much all areas and the app that you can download onto the desktop has a really nice user interface that allows you to go through the mistakes really really easily and identify why you're making those mistakes and give you some suggestions uh, one thing i do want to say it is a machine so it's not perfect i've used it many times to point out my errors and it is is definitely correct but occasionally it will highlight something that is, is definitely right. But as I said, for a language learner, it would be really, really useful. And it would probably highlight a lot of your um, common mistakes that you can learn from. So Grammarly is number three. Before we go on to number four, I want to say about the sponsor, which is PDF Element by Wondershare. Now, I personally get very frustrated with PDFs in general. When they come to me and I, I start using the basic editor that I have, I get frustrated. I can't edit what I want and then it often doesn't save and I lose a lot of time. But this one is um, really well designed. When I went onto it, it felt understandable instantly and I was able to edit a lot more things and save time in general. So if you get frustrated with your current editor, check out this one because it could probably save you a lot of time and hassle and it'll be a lot more enjoyable. So if you want 50% off, hit the link below and you can enjoy editing PDFs much more easily. Okay, number four. It is time for number four, which is all about pronunciation. You obviously know that English is not pronounced how it reads. The letters don't add up. They don't make sense. God help me, if only there was a website that had locals recording their voices and uploading them to a database for you to search a word and have multiple accents and dialects at the click of a button. Well, Forvo.com. Forvo is a website that has exactly that. So loads of people have been uploading their pronunciation of each word in the English dictionary. And it's not just words, it's also phrases and idioms. So you could probably learn quite a few phrases around each word that you search. But what I really like, what I love about this one is that you get to see the exact location, not the address, not the postcode, but you get to see the area at which that person is from. So if you type in a word, you'll be able to see if it's American or British or other, it separates them nicely. And then if you scroll down, you get to see the map and the map shows you if they're from the north of England, if they're from right in the middle of London, if they're from south down Cornwall area. So you really get to understand where that person is from and how that word is pronounced from that area, which is really powerful considering the variety of accents and dialects that we have in the UK. There's another feature on this website that I quite like. It's called the events site and it puts all of the pronounced words into uh, correct events that are happening at the moment. So right now I think there's a Halloween event. 
so you can learn how to pronounce all of the vocabulary around Halloween. There's also sporting events. And then there's even pop culture and TV, like how to pronounce Game of Thrones names correctly. So there's a lot in the events section. And finally, there's also a Forvo travel app that gives you useful travel phrases to survive in the country that you're going to. So if you're also learning another language, this would be really useful for you. And it goes into specific regions like the Basque country. It has its own specific useful phrases for traveling to the north of Spain, the Basque country. So there we go. That is your fourth, Forvo is your fourth recommendation from me. All right, time for number five. We've used it quite a lot in our channel actually. I don't know if you've noticed, but we provide flashcards for people to revise the vocabulary from our videos. This is Quizlet. Quizlet is an online flashcard system. So you remember those days where you used to write a word and then the definition on the back and then you'd flip that card round and try to mem remember it. There are a couple of powerful features of Quizlet. This is, this is why I like Quizlet so much for language learners. One, you can create your own pack. So you can revise for a lesson by putting in the word that you learned and then you can define it. But they also include an autofill, which is not just like a standard dictionary, but it's a human created definition. So if somebody has also done the same before you, and there are a lot of users on this now, it will autofill with a really memorable way of learning it. You can also add pictures to the definition to increase your likelihood of remembering it. And if you're feeling lazy, you could type in a topic like holiday vocabulary, and it will probably have a lot of Quizlet flashcards already created by other members because you usually put your set as public so other people can access it on their own account. So it's got a great community around it. So you can benefit from that community's hard work by searching the topic and then downloading that pack. Now, it's gone further than just the traditional flip the card over and see if you remember the definition. It's got the controlled exercises like that, um, up to multiple choice quizzes, and then all the way to free practice, where you have to type in the definition yourself and play some crazy interactive games that allow for variety, that enables you to continue learning in a fun, dynamic way. So there we are, your five free online language learning resources in 2019. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope they were useful for you. And because you've got here, I'm gonna give you a bonus one. It's unfortunately not free, although it has a trial period, but I really, really believe in it and it's great for listening practice. And this is audible.com. If you're like me and you like listening to books, then Audible is really, really good. Audible is a really powerful, extensive library for you to choose from. And again, connect your passion to language learning. And they also have a feature on the app of slowing the speed down or speeding it up so you can get through the, the content at your own pace, which is really nice. They also have originals, Audible originals, that give you access to more content if you have the membership. I would just suggest the 30-day trial. It's free and you get one credit, I think, and then at the end of that, you can quit. But yeah, give it a go for 30 days. The link in the description, it is an affiliate link, so don't kill me, but I have tens of different books on my app. I've used it for years, and I think every language learner could benefit from this. So uh, yeah, check out Audible and all of the other five. So to recap, we have Younglish for your sentence example, TED.com for your listening, and reading in the transcript. Number three was Grammarly, so that helps correct your digital writing. It can't do paper analysis, although if you were listening, you could probably use the OCR technology and then get it on your computer, edit it with PDF Element, and then get onto Grammarly. Number four was Forvo. That is all about how to pronounce words and be specific to the region or the country. And number five was your online flashcards with 
Quizlet. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed that video. I know it was obviously a different type of video to our standard real English with real teachers. We will be keeping the conversations going between me and Harry. He will be coming over to Australia soon and we will be doing our first Australia residential course. And there's also a link in the description box for you to sign up to the newsletter letting you know when we will be doing it and where it will be. All right, that's enough from me for now. Just remember to like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. I want to know what's your opinion. Give us a comment, tell me what you think is your favorite piece of advice from this video and uh, subscribe if you haven't already because we've got a lot more videos coming your way. Bye for now. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram to get more day-to-day -day posts and stories helping you learn English in more dynamic and interactive ways.